Urua is the center of New Zealand's geothermal attraction. As you can see from these images, the city and surrounding residential areas is steamy all over from mist, steam and smoke coming out from the grounds through vents, hot springs, bubbling mud pools, spouting geysers and hot water pools and streams. Indicative of constant uh, geothermal activity because Rotorua was built on a geothermal hotspot as it lies within a volcanic reef and sits on a caldera. Tepuya is a town just south of the uh, Rotorua town center, located in the Huaca Riwarua Thermal Valley, settled by the Maori tribe in 1325. For the As, uh, this village uh, sits on a volcanic caldera. Two centuries ago, the village was devastated by the eruption of Mount Tarawera in 1886. To this day, Tepue has become a Maori cultural center with a living Maori village in Huaca Riwaro Valley. Now let us take a tour and trek uh, through the pathways and boardwalk around this village of untouched moon crater-like geothermal landscape to experience the nature of Mother Earth in this Waka Riwariwa Thermal Reserve. Straight where it's bubbling because that's way too hot. But they would come away from the bubbling and they would scrape that warm mud away and they'd pack it on like a heat pack if they had a sore shoulder. Wow. Um, mud spas or mud pools are formed in high temperature geothermal areas where water is in short supply. dioxide is released uh, from the ascending steam of the boiling water mixing with mud and clay thus causing the bubbling and then it squirted over the brim of the mud spot like a mini volcano but it was really sad because before this was in a remote area Got to a place, came on the radio, you know, it's going to be in the program. We were at the sea with no low tide. Bohutu Geyser is the main attraction of Tapuya Geothermal Wonderland and is the largest geyser in the southern hemisphere among the most active in the area. It erupts up to 20 times a day, sending blasting jets of a smelly sulfurous steam and dirt up to 100 feet into the air.
After an awe-inspiring visit in Rotorua with their dramatic giant geysers, let us now drive to another fascinating geothermal field 44 miles south of Rotorua called Orake Kurako, surrounded by a beautiful lake and large green forest and thus offers more nature attractions. The colorful silica cinder terraces adds to a unique geothermal experience. Uhakuri Lake was once the Waikato River until it was harnessed to create a dam in 1961 for hydroelectric purposes. The dam created this now beautiful lake called Uhakuri Lake. Oraki Korako still remains the largest geothermal field in New Zealand. Oraki Kurako Geothermal Field is also called the Hidden Valley or Place of, of Adorning in a Maori language. It is considered the largest geothermal field in New Zealand. It is located in a volcanic area surrounded by green last forest and the Uhakuri Lake, which creates an amazing contrast to the vibrant colors of the thermal field created by the startling silica center terraces decorated with colorful startling patterns. The Emerald Terrace where I'm looking at right now is the first silica center terrace we are encountering as it is in the lowest part of this thermal field. The wet surface looks like a lava flow because of uh, different uh, minerals such as sulfur oxide, hydrogen and other volcanic chemicals coming off from the vents. Let's move on to explore this vast field teeming with geothermal activity. Let us walk uphill to get a panoramic view of this uh, geothermal field. Well, here we are at the lookout point. The variety of colors on the ground surface of the thermal field, from yellow to orange, green, gray, white, and black, is the result of chemical reactions from various chemicals or, and minerals such as sulfur, iron, and even thermal field microbes that oxidize the silica. Let us walk down and view the third terrace. It is nice that they built this lookout viewpoints and this uh, boardwalk across this scorching terrace so that you can admire at close range the fascinating features of this geothermal field. Golden Fist Terrace is the largest fault scar in this valley, measuring 40 meters long and 5 meters high. of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide gas is uh, what causes the bubbling of this mud pool.
higher up above the three terraces that we have seen is now the uh, artist Palen. It is a flat 10,000 meter square silica center terrace covered with clear blue alkali chloride pools and irregularly erupting geysers. This hot spring called the Soda Fountain has been dormant for some 17 years and then it suddenly refilled and came to life, then started erupting in 1984. Now let's go downhill and take a look at this unusual cave called Ruatapo. The Ruatapo cave is an unusual cave as it exists in a geothermal field, a place where the local natives used to hide when their enemies come around. There are only two of this kind of cave in the world and the other one is in Italy. Uh, the cave extends up to 45 meters. We have to descend on a steep wooden stairs as there is a vertical drop of 23 meters. At the bottom is a shallow pool of clear sulfate with acid water. Heading back to the jetty and return to the visitor center. It was a fascinating experience uh, to go through this thermal field, especially the amazing silica terraces with its varying vibrant colors that contrast with the surrounding last green forest for a captivating sight. Uraki Kurako is certainly an enchanting geothermal paradise for geologic enthusiasts. Congratulations, we made it. Yeah. Okay, I got you. <laughs> 